Remember beloved Supandi from the popular Tinkle comics? His antics were really humorous and it made us laugh always, isn't it? Written smartly with a lot of wordplay and sketched effectively too, right? Now one such Supandi joke out of the many Supandi jokes that I know, let me recite that to you and let me share my laughter with you all. <laughs> so here it goes. One day, a thief got into Supandi's house and he cleverly called up the police. Now, the police gave Supandi some instruction and told him uh, to you know, wait for them to come by. After some time, when the police arrived, they realized that the thief had already escaped. The police asked Supandi, where did the thief go? I asked you to block all exits. Supandi said, I did but he escaped through the entrance. Now that is Supandi for you. Cleverly written with a lot of wordplay, right? So here we are with today's episode of Stand Out at Stand Up Comedy. I am Sapna Mahadevan, your host for this evening. And the aim here is to teach all of you how you can be writing comedy sets all by yourself. Isn't it interesting? So come by with me to this journey of, let me show you the standout at stand-up comedy. Explore yourself at a comic level. Yes, that's what the journey is all about. And it is going to be really interesting. Take that from me. We are in the introductory week now. We started with what is stand-up comedy. Then we told you about where and how it originated and last episode, I gave you eight different types of stand-up comedy sets. And uh, today we are going to continue with that topic ahead. And uh, I'm going to give you some more different types of stand-up comedy sets. Yes. So um, I welcome all of you to PSTV Live. I can see emojis, hellos there in the chat box. Momita Ghosh, thanks a lot for that love emoji. And uh, yes, let's get started with our episode. I'm going to show you the coming up slide, all the things that we have specially curated for our wonderful viewers here. There it is. We have what is as the first segment and then a um, little bit of trivia, something to amuse ourselves. Then, of course, the main agenda for today is the various other types of stand-up comedy. There is a quiz time, so do... Uh, look out for that quiz time as well. Um, other fun segments, let me name them for you. There is um, Guess the Comedian, Crossword. There is Decipher the EDM. There's also a Google word for today, a recommendation of the day. And uh, also, how can we ever forget the icebreaker questions, right? So I'm expecting some interesting, fun answers in the icebreaker segment today. Do stay tuned in here with me, Sapna Mahadevan. I'm going to take you ahead into this wonderful journey. We are going to have a lot of learning along with so much of fun. Yes. Yay is the comment that I get there. Lovely. Thanks for that like. Tanu Karan Juneja. Um, a warm welcome to each one of you. And let's get started with our first icebreaker question for the day. Here it is. If you could invent something, then what would it be? Wow, that's wonderful, isn't it? Ponder on this one. What, what is it that you would invent? Any comments in the chat box? Quick, quick, I want your answers quickly in the chat box here. It's really, I'm really curious to know what are the things that you would want to invent invent maybe um great parul tells me a mr india watch okay so a mr india wrist watch just like we had in the movie isn't it parul that's exciting and you can get and you can just become invisible maybe play pranks on your friends right wow that's wonderful what else i if i come to think about it 
I think I would really want to invent something, maybe a AI powered robot or something that really helps me with my household chores. Maybe that's one job that's really boring, isn't it? At the same time, I love to keep everything everything spick and span. So yes, um, I think an AI powered robot will be something that I would really wish for. What else do you think comes to your mind? Okay, we have Tanisha here, and that's interesting. Tanisha, Tanisha tells me a teleportation, a teleporting machine, right? That's wonderful, awesome. So yes, it can just teleport you to school, maybe if you have overslept, right? Wonderful. What else can you think of? Anything that um, is going to really make your lives easier? Okay, and. Uh, what is that? Okay, Varun tells me an app which could, okay, yes, so let me rephrase that, an app that could make him find his brother, okay, um, an app or some kind of a device by which you can always locate where your brother is, yes, close buddies that you are, isn't it? Wow, fun answers here, you can keep on thinking on this one, ponder, and uh, let me know in the chat box if anything else strikes to you. What is that one thing that you're going to invent if you could do that, right? Interesting answers there. I hope all the inventors are listening to this. Yes. Wow, that's fun. So let's move ahead after that first icebreaker question into our next segment. And it is all about what are we discussing today, right? So as I told you, it's all about stand-up comedy. And today it is the continuation of episode three where we saw eight different types of stand-up comedy. Yes, if you are really wondering what those eight types are, then let me tell you today again, we are going to show you more than 10 varieties of stand-up comedy, apart from the eight that we have already discussed, right? So realization has struck, isn't it? So there are a lot of different types of stand-up comedy that can be performed. And today we are going to discuss the other, uh, I think, uh, 10 to 11 types that we have um, planned for today's segment, right? So that is what we are going to discuss. And let's start with what is stand-up comedy. So all of my new viewers, let me uh, bring it to your notice that stand-up comedy is a comedy performance that um, is performed by a comedian for a live audience. So he or she is directly interacting with the audience with the aim of making them laugh. Now, Think, come to think about it, this is really a tough nut to crack. And the performer is known as comic, a comedian, or sometimes also as a stand-up, right? Now, um, if you think about this, then stand-up comedy can consist of one-liners. It could have stories, uh, you know, sets that are um, told as if they were stories with a sequence of events and somehow... Um, the comedian places punchlines or one-liners or jokes in between, which make you laugh. And other than that, there could be real-life observations as well. So anything mundane, any um, everyday life moment can get turned into a comedy moment by uh, the talented comedian, right? So there could be a different, uh, different varieties that they combine to make people laugh. And it could also incorporate props and music and magic, maybe ventriloquism as well. And let me also tell you that stand-up comedy these days is really emerging. It is quite popular. And there are a lot of places where you can see stand-up comedies, uh, comedy performances uh, being done. So for example, there could be special laugh out clubs where a stand-up comedy performance could be um, done, or they could also be done in festivals uh, maybe college festivals and uh, clubs or even theaters, right? So it is a kind of a vertical that is really emerging. And uh, let me also tell you that this uh, can also be taken up as a career choice, yes? So that's what stand-up comedy is all about. And I have Curly Shine here in the uh, chat box wishing me happy holy. It is an Indian festival full of colors that just went by. And to all the people who celebrated, I hope you all had a safe and fun Holi this year. And if I remember correctly, then 
I think Latika is behind this handle, right? Uh, so maybe you can give me a thumbs up um, to just confirm that. And thanks a lot for that um, holy wish, Latika. And uh, let me move ahead to the next segment. We have uh, the next segment playing out here, which is let's amuse ourselves a little. And here in this segment, I'm going to recall some of the funny incidents that we have all encountered, right? It's going to be really amusing. Stay tuned in here with me for all the fun and for all the learning. Yes, here is the first um, funny incident that I'm going to bring out to you. And uh, Latika says, you got this. Wow, I'm so proud of my memory, right? Um, great, Latika, thanks a lot. And uh, let's move ahead. Here is the first one. And as you can see in the picture there, I think as kids, and maybe some of you who are watching me right now, uh, the brown part or the sides of the bread were really the worst thing that we could have ever be eating, right? And uh, we always had to carve those uh, brown parts off and uh, see to it that the white part remained intact yes how many of you have done that do let me know in the chat box here that's one amusing fact here and the second one let me tell you this we're all guilty of doing i think our pencils got shorter every day only because of us wanting to have these beautiful pencil peels yes i had this habit of uh, you know just sharpening my pencil to get these pencil peels um, and maybe make craft out of them right so that's one amusing thing that we used to do in school, right? Um, and I can see thumbs up coming up there. So yes, I know all of us are guilty of doing that, right? Um, but now as a grown up, I do understand that that was a lot of, um, you know, waste of wood maybe, right? And should not be doing that. But yes, a uh, pastime that we all have done during school time. Yes. So that's uh, one of that amusing fact here and now let's move ahead to the third one i get a i get a laugh emoji there <laughs> yes ruchika and uh, the third one coming up next okay so the best weapon in childhood do you remember doing this squeeze the orange peel in your friend's eyes to make them scratch their eyes out right yes so all of these amusing things that we have all done as children right and maybe some of you young kids here in the audience would definitely relate to it right so that was the uh, amuse ourselves a little segment i hope you all had fun with this segment here and let me now move ahead to the main segment of the day types of stand-up comedy right and here we have the first type of stand-up comedy for today's episode which is alternative comedy right now let me tell you alternative comedy was a term which was coined in um, the year 1980 uh, or maybe in the year in the 1980s perhaps and uh, this was a style of comedy that made a conscious break with uh, the mainstream comedic style of the era right so whatever was mainstream um, if you take that off and what remains is uh, alternative comedy, right? And uh, let me also tell you that it is, uh, if you come to think about it, then it is literally anything that isn't mainstream, yes? And it changes because the mainstream uh, comedy changes, right? Now, um, also about alternative comedy, it could be a combination of different um, styles, such as observational comedy, satire, surrealism, slapstick, some of this we have already seen in the last episode and some we will be understanding what that is all about in today's episode, right? And uh, sometimes also improv comedy or improvisation can be a part of alternative comedy, right? So it's a blend of many other um, comedy structures, but whatever is not mainstream, that can be termed as alternative comedy, yes? Now, that was the first one for today's um, segment and let's move ahead to the second type of uh, stand-up comedy that we have for today which is anecdotal comedy right and this is quite simple it is composed of anecdotes which means real life experiences or incidents um, crafted or weaved in the way of stories right and uh, this is really funny because uh, you know the comedian they share um, their very own comic personal stories, right? Now, these anecdotes, which are used in anecdotal comedy, may be wholly or partially real, but are 
definitely humorous and exciting to hear and uh, anecdotal comedy let me tell you is also a type of comedy in which a person must bear being laughed at one can go on narrating amusing stories while uh, doing an anecdotal uh, comedy set and this is what makes open mic comedy so awesome right and um, sitting there in the audience when you hear a comedian talk about their real life incidences in a fun way it's definitely going to make you laugh right so that's the second type that we have for today anecdotal comedy based on anecdotes from real life and the third comedy structure that we have here is anti humor comedy now it would be really confusing with that term there anti humor because we humor is what we are trying to induce here right now as the name suggests anti humor seems like something really serious and it is a type of comedy which is indirect in nature so it ha- anti humor comedy happens when uh, the comedian or whoever the performer is uh, they talk about something intentionally which is not funny right and uh, it lacks an in intrinsic meaning but the underlying humor or the irony of whatever the topic was that gets expressed and that is how the comedian tries to induce humor into his set right and the essence of anti humor comedy is always the surprise factor or um the absence of an expected joke yes so that's anti humor comedy for you and um it is really a skill that the comedian has um and uh, only the some of the talented few can be making people laugh through anti humor comedy uh but let me tell you that uh, you know you sit there in the audience and you get taken by surprise with um the underlying humor that's there which is not on your face but indirect right so that's anti humor so till now we saw alternative comedy anecdotal comedy which are based on real life incidents or anecdotes and the third one that we saw was anti humor right now the fourth one for today is cringe comedy so let me tell you cringe comedy is all about embarrassment right and uh, what the comedian does here is uh, they try to derive humor from social awkwardness or a guilty pleasure maybe and um, there could also be sometimes a air of mockumentary and they revolve around a serious setting such as a workplace to lend the comedy a sense of reality right that's what is cringe comedy for you something that you cringe on so it is really going to be um an embarrassing topic maybe embarrassing situations yes and let me tell you cringe comedy has a special place in our hearts uh because of the way the audience can relate to it with all of the awkward situations yes now um you can really um see the audience cringe because they are watching someone squirm with embarrassment in an awkward situation and uh, that's what makes this particular type of comedy really very interesting right now after the cringe comedy the fifth one that we have for today you can take down notes if you like you can jot them down and uh, just uh, maybe jot down what each of the comedy types mean right and now we are going ahead to the fifth type of stand up comedy which is heritage comedy now as you can understand from that name there this particular comedy is based on the stereotypes or um a particular uh, a particular um, i could say um structure that runs through a culture or a heritage and a person performing a heritage comedy act um usually uh um, makes fun of the dress code or accent of the region to deliver the comedy act yes and it was and it also involves making fun of things peculiar to one geographic location to highlight the comedy hidden uh in everyday life there right so maybe some sections of the society will be able to understand um the heritage comedy in detail because it's about a particular geography right so that's what is heritage comedy all about um and the next part um i'm talking about the sixth type of stand up comedy now is improvisational stand up comedy and let me tell you it could also be called improv comedy popularly known as that and this one is the ty- uh, is the type in which uh, most of the things in a comedy set are unplanned or there are um they are really situational yes now the comedians usually take a clue from the audience or other sources to improvise their plot and to carry it on from there the script as well of this particular type of comedy is spontaneous that means 
um, the the comedians have not prepared for it, mind you, and uh, they are the set is created by the performer um, based on the clues and the scene that is made up at the moment, right? So again, something which is really tricky, and you need to be spontaneous with that. And uh, the one-liners, the jokes, the punchlines, whatever comes to your mind, it has to be made up in a jiffy just like that yes so that's improv comedy for you again um really uh, requires a lot of talent and now for the next variety that we have here the seventh one going which is mockumentary right and mockumentary a combination of mocking and documentary so put together this would mean it is a form of comedy which is used to mock a serious subject by way of hilarious incidents, right? Now, in other words, a documentary style parody is known as mockumentary and mockumentaries offer a powerfully hilarious storytelling device, but only a few comedians can master this type of comedy, right? Now, after looking at all of these types of comedy, there are others that I'm going to speak of as well, but let's take a break in between and uh, let me bring you to this segment here, which is real fun. Uh, which is the quiz time. But before that, it is time for another icebreaker question. And the question is, if you could change one of your house rules, what would it be? That's the next question that we have here. And uh, I'm going to get a better understanding of some of the rules that you have in your houses. Yes. So do let me know in the chat box. What is that one house rule that you would want to break? Okay. And is your household really strict with those rules? In the chat box, I'm going to wait for some of your answers. And uh, okay, one of them, uh, Raja tells me that sleeping, okay, sleeping early at night. So how early is that? What is your uh, rule for sleeping early? Yes, so that's a nice thing actually for kids, yes. Early to bed and early to rise. Okay, that was one. Okay, got that. Um, sitting together to eat food. That's a wonderful house rule. Why do we want to change that, isn't it? That's family time. Okay, what else? Change one of your house rules. None that I can think of is what Prisha tells me. Okay. Um, so maybe you can write to me whenever you have answers for this one. Yes. Um, one of the house rules that maybe my kids would want to break would be going to bed exactly at nine. Yes. Okay. So let's move ahead to our quiz time now. And you need to be really quick with these questions. I'm going to give you only 30 seconds. The clock is going to tick and uh, you need to be really fast on your toes, right? Here is the first question on our quiz time. Which place is known as the roof of the world? That's the first question coming up here. Answers in the chat box. And uh, I hope I get some correct ones. The place which is known as the roof of the world, which is this place. Any ideas to this question here? Okay, I've got not got any answers yet. There is a question mark and a think emoji. Think hard. Which place is known as the roof of the world? That's the first question. And uh, time is ticking by. Let me give you the answer. It is Tibet. Yes. And maybe you can Google up to check why that is so. And here is the second question for the day. How many teeth does a healthy adult have, including the wisdom teeth? That's quite easy, isn't it? The number of teeth that an adult has. Answers in the chat box, waiting for some answers here. 32, that is correct. Yes, you all are correct. 32 is the right number. And here we go for the third one, which is the gas, which is most abundant in the earth's atmosphere so we have all learned this in school gas which is most abundant in the earth's atmosphere quickly in the chat box waiting for some of your answers 
And this was the second last question for the day. Nitrogen it is, that is correct. And the last question for the day, brace yourselves. This is the last quiz question for the day. How many people do you think are there in the world? Any guesses? Let me give that to you. There are over 7 billion people in the earth. Yes, in the world. Now, let's move ahead uh, to the next segment. It's an interesting one. We have uh, curated a new segment for the stand-up comedy vertical, which is Decipher the EDM. And all the EDMs that there are relating to uh, laughter or making someone laugh. So here is the Decipher the EDM, EDM for the day. Good for a laugh. Right. And what would this phrase mean to do something in order to make someone else laugh? So if you are um, going to act awkwardly to make someone else laugh, then that's what you're doing. Good for a laugh is the name of the EDM or the phrase that we should be using. And let me give you a sentence for that. I would say eating eight hot dogs in five minutes was good for a laugh. Yes. Do you get that? Google this EDM and jot it down in your EDM journal. Use it wherever appropriate. You're definitely going to impress your audience, yes? So that was Decipher the EDM for all of you. And here we come to the next icebreaker question. There it is. If you could eat two dishes as a combination, then what would they be? Maybe a weird combination that only you have. You can mention that in the chat box here. Two different combinations that you love eating. Any answers? Quickly in the chat box. Thanks for that like there. Momita Ghosh, Anupama Rai, Tripti Kiran Mungekar, Tanu Karan Juneja. Thanks a lot for all the like and the love that you have poured here um, in the chat box. Yes, any answers to... Uh, food combinations that you feel are good enough and uh, you might want to try them out or you're, you already do maybe. Okay, so I have a comment here from Prisha and Prisha says um, that's really weird. Roti with gulab jamun. So let me tell all my viewers here that it is flat bread with a sweet dish that is really popular in India. Yes, so Prisha, yes, that is a bit of an odd combination. Um, what else? Uh, okay, so Varun tells me biscuit in water. Okay, Varun, I think uh, dunking a biscuit in tea uh, is what I like. And I definitely do not find that weird. But biscuit uh, in water seems to be a little bit weird for me. Yes. You can maybe tell my audience here, how does it taste? Yes. Okay. So thanks for all of those answers there. And uh, what else? A sweet pizza. Okay. Maybe, um, yes, I, I really can't um, decipher that. A sweet pizza is something really weird. But uh, yes, we have always seen uh, kiwi and pineapple toppings in pizza. Yes, I really do not like them at all. And uh, wow, thanks a lot for all of those answers there. Um, Gunjan saying hello here in the chat box. Hi, Gunjan. Gunjan, if something comes to your mind, do let me know in the chat box. Any two dish combinations that seem weird, uh, maybe, but you love eating them. Okay, with that, let me move ahead to the next segment here. Thanks a lot, uh, Gunjan. I hope you also had a fun holy this time. And let's move ahead to the next uh, segment. And here we have guess the instrument for today, right? So anyone here in the audience who knows how to play musical instruments, do give me a shout out. And I'm going to show you some pictures. And you need to um, guess the musical instrument for me in the chat box, right? Here is the first one for today. Um, 
that's quite easy quickly in the chat box the name of the musical instrument and that is correct yes it is a guitar of course and here is the next one what is that a trumpet yes that's right the next one coming up there it is guitar was correct gunjan can't see any answers coming up this is quite simple i think there is a bit of a lag i'm not getting answers or responses here in the chat box and there it is yes it is a tabla thanks for all of those answers there great let's move ahead um there it is the next musical instrument <coughs> and uh, drum is not the correct answer gunjan that was a tabla and here we have yes it is a flute of course that is correct and the last one for today what do you think is this musical instrument and i really love this musical instrument although i do not know how to play it but yes definitely sounds really good and that is a sitar okay so people in the audience if you know how to play any musical instrument do let me know in the chat box there and uh, let's now continue with the different types of stand up comedy that there are i gave you seven before we uh, took a break for the quiz questions and now let's move ahead to the eighth type of stand up comedy which is a one line joke right now by the name itself a one line joke is a humor which is expressed in a single line right so a good one liner joke is going to be concise it's going to be meaningful and will make the audience laugh um with the intended pauses and comedians and actors use this comedic method as a part of their act to give a better introduction to their comedic skills right so the next time you come across this type of a joke or this type of a comedy where um the punch line is all wrapped up in in a in a line then make sure that you laugh out loud yes so that's a one line joke another type of stand up comedy here uh gunjan your answer is perfect it was the flute thanks for mentioning that here uh and uh, let's move ahead to the next one spoof comedy right so spoof comedy let me tell you it is a sub genre of comedy and it is always characterized by um satirical imitation or a parody maybe uh, and what that means is it is a reuse or a deception of something in a humorous manner yes so something that has already uh, been out there if you reuse that uh, for humorous purposes then you're doing a parody which is a sub genre um or and it is called spoof comedy and the spoof comedy may involve recreation of a book a novel a film um or any other medium in a humorous way which makes the whole thing really comic and spoof comedy adds a whole new look um to the old version of it and makes it hilarious at the same time right so that is another um type of sub comedy that we have apart from that moving ahead to the 10th type of comedy for today which is surreal comedy right now surreal humor is a form of humor which is uh, predicated on deliberate violation of casual reasoning which means uh, that all of the humor is induced from events and behaviors that are obviously illogical right so um, the comedian can uh, perform a portrayal of uh, bizarre juxtapositions incongruity um absurd situations maybe or something which is really irrational and there could be also expressions of nonsense all of this when um induced induced the humor for the public then this would be termed as surreal humor or surrealism yes so that's again another type of stand up comedy here um and uh, let me tell you it is going to be definitely worth your time if you watch a comedy set which has surreal humor and um 
as i told you it has all the bizarre and uh, ridiculous situations right now after this the 11th type of stand up comedy that we have for today is wit or word play now this is really interesting whenever there is a uh, word play involved in the joke which means that uh, different uh, interpretations of one single word which makes the whole thing humorous right um this particular form of stand up comedy is really witty and intelligent and when a comedian is able to write or present something which is cleverly funny it is called wit comedy and it includes a uh, subtle manipulation of language there could be pun as well which is really intended for making the public laugh and also there could be comparisons drawn out right so this was the 11th type of stand up comedy that we uh, discussed in today's episode i hope that you have a better understanding of all the different types of stand up comedy that there are and uh, we all have also had a uh, kind of a realization that there could be so many different types of stand up comedy yes so um in our next segment we will be going into details of uh, more about uh, stand up comedy performances but for now i'm going to take you to another google it word which is parody right so let me tell you parody would mean um an imitation of a style or a particular writer maybe an artist uh with deliberate exaggeration for comic effect that is what is parody and it can also be called a spoof a satire or a take off maybe and uh, here the uh, largely what the comedian is trying to do is uh, he he or she is trying to imitate the creative work of someone else or they are trying to comment or make fun of uh, an a creative work that has already been done by someone else um and try to produce ironic irritation as well to make the public laugh yes so that what that is what is called uh, parody that is the google it word for today do check that word out um in google maybe jot it down and try and understand what it basically means yes now after that google it word we come ahead to another interesting segment guess the comedy show here is the first one and this one um is really quite popular i know i'm going to get a lot of answers here this character um has really made us laugh all throughout with all the um expressions his antics right um and uh, yes those are all correct answers it is atkinson here with the popular title that he has earned mr bean right and here is the next show that we have uh looking at that picture can you guess what which is this particular comedy show answers in the chat box and let me reveal that one here it is good luck charlie right and with that let me give you a recommendation of the day that is a series which is uh, produced by disney and it is called wizards of waverly place right that is a recommendation from us to you have a fun time have a hearty laugh watching that recommendation of the day yes and now moving ahead to the last segment for the day which is locate the words i present to you a letter maze and you need to um have a keen observation and try to find out three words that are hidden in this letter maze and let me tell you all these words could be written horizontally vertically or even diagonally yes so here is the letter maze quickly in the chat box i want your answers and all of the words are going to be related to today's episode so try recollecting all the things that we spoke of for today and give me the words in the chat box um that was real quick prisha gives me parody that's great that's one of the words two more to go what are the other different things that we spoke about for today i'm going to give you some time here pun it is yes the second word is pun and uh, any guesses for the third word parody and pun and uh, let me give that to you i think it should be weird here is the first one parody and then we have weird yes second word is weird and the third one uh, is pun 
right? So these were the three words in today's episode. And I hope you had um, as much fun as I had in bringing out this episode to you. Really a wealth of information about stand-up comedy performances. And uh, quickly, let us round up all the things that we learned in today's episode with types of stand-up comedy. And here are the different types that we learned in today's episode, right? So we saw what was alternative comedy and then anecdotal comedy, which uh, comes out of humor, which is derived from the comedian's, um, you know, real life incidents. And there's anti-humor comedy, which means it is something uh, which is the humor is really indirect. It is not on your face. Uh, then there is cringe comedy, which depends on um, the awk social awkwardness, maybe embarrassing moments, um, something that makes the audience squirm, right? There is heritage comedy, which uh, derives humor from uh, certain aspects of the of a particular geography or a particular culture. Then there is improv comedy, which is a really a tough nut to crack because the comedian um, is um, not prepared at all. And the topic or the clues are uh, really spontaneous, yes? So that's improv comedy for you. And then we have mockumentary, um, which is uh, a take on uh, documentary plus mocking. Then there are one line jokes, there is spoof comedy, there is surreal comedy. And also the last one, but never the least, uh, it is wit or wordplay, which is um, a clever form of humor, right? So these were the different types that we um, saw in today's episode. And uh, let me also bring out to you the project work, a really interesting one. Think out of the box and maybe think of uh, other stand-up comedy performances that could be done apart from the ones that we have spoken about in our past, in today's episode, as well as the third episode. Yes. So that's the project work for you. Think about this one. And for tomorrow, let me tell you, we are going to be back with a breakdown of a classic, right? Since it is a Saturday special episode. So um, we present to you a classic story and then um, give you all the tips and tricks of how you can be attempting to write a story just like that with uh, all the uh, need, much needed information uh, that you would want. Yes. So it's a Saturday special episode for tomorrow. Do stay tuned in here at 6 p.m. India time. And I'm Sapna Mahadevan signing out for today. But uh, before I leave you, and end this broadcast, I definitely would ask you to take good care of yourselves, have a happy time and a relaxed uh, time ahead. Yes. Bye-bye.